Welcome to Bethany Online. We are glad that you can be with us today, whether it is Sunday or any other day of the week. We are glad that you can come and worship with us. This is for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Next week, you'll have the opportunity to hear Reformation Sunday, and uh, we will continue on with some special Sundays as we head toward the end of the church year and then into Advent. We begin with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 18th chapter, beginning at the 9th verse. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, 
but all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace is yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel lesson, which uh, is from Luke chapter 18. I'd like to read, read just a small part of that. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. My dear friend, oftentimes we fall into this pattern. We fall into this pattern of wanting to believe that some people are worth admiring, that some people are important. And in fact, I will contend that the world always has some groups of people that they admire more than others, and that that group of people changes. In fact, it changes so quickly that you might decide one thing and 50 years later find out you should have decided a different thing, depending on what your goals are and what you're trying to achieve. Some people look to others to see if they are doing the right things. Oftentimes we look at ourselves and we try to pump ourselves up and say that we are the righteous ones and others are doing what is wrong. I will contend that most of the time when we're pointing at the sins of others, we're really trying to say, I'm better than they are. I'm more righteous than they are. When Jesus calls us over and over again to point to the cross, to point to the gift of God's grace, to not be worried about the sins of this world, but to be more focused on sharing the gospel message. Yes, there needs to be a balance of sin and grace. Yes, we need to understand what sins are, and we need to try to live the life that God wants us to have. But at the same time, if we find ourselves standing on the shoulders of others saying we're better than they are, we fall into this trap. And this is why Jesus was telling the parable. In one of the more recent movies that I really like that came out, a movie called Ghostbusters Afterlife, the comedians, which are people like Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, who passed away and was given a tribute in this movie, they tend to be comedians who point out some of the things in life that are kind of ridiculous if you think about them long enough. 
they have this, this little boy in the, in the movie. He calls himself Podcast. He calls himself Podcast because he runs around recording what other people say and then putting it up on his podcast, hoping that someday he becomes famous with all the different weird things he's putting up online and interviewing people and trying to find these unusual events and, and things that are, uh, that are strange and mysterious. And he has one subscriber, one person who listens to his podcast, which in the end of the movie turns out to be one of the Ghostbusters. But it's poking at a lot of different things. It's poking at the fact that we think that all of us have something to say, something to record, that other people want to listen to, and someday we'll have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, or millions of people who want to listen to what we have to say. And there's been a renaissance of podcasts because it's so easy to do, and people are doing them more and more. In fact, I'm sure there are enough things being recorded and put on the Internet that none of us could in a lifetime listen to everything that's put up there in just one day. So much to listen to. But the line that I love is he's, he's sitting in the, in the car with the other two who are the grandchildren of one of the original Ghostbusters. And when he realizes that they really are the grandchildren of one of the bust, Ghostbusters, he is so impressed with who their grandfather is that he says to them how famous they are for being the grandchildren of this Ghostbuster. And he says, you can literally be anything you want, like an influencer or a DJ. And I know what the comedians are poking at there. They're poking at the fact that for this young man at his age, which is supposed to be about 12 years old, he thinks that the greatest thing in life would be to be an influencer or a DJ. And I think back to when I was 12, and I think, what were the things we really wanted to be if we thought we could be special? <coughs> I remember a time when it would be things like being the president of the United States. It would be being an astronaut. There were, there were things we wanted to be and thought would be really cool to be. There were things that meant you had fame. There were things that meant you had fortune. There were things that meant that people respected you. Still in the background at that time were things like being a doctor, being a lawyer, being someone of some sort of status. But who is someone of some sort of status changes rather quickly in our lives, changes in the generations. And there are vocations which used to be honored more and now are not, vocations that used to be paid more and now are paid less. Through fame and fortune and influence, these things change, and they change rapidly. Now, at the time of Jesus, some of the people who would have been seen as influencers, some of the people who would have been seen as people who were important and who were well taken care of, would have been the Pharisees and the priests and the religious leaders of their day. And that's one of the people that Jesus talks about in his parable. Some of the people who were not well respected were the tax collectors. They may have made a fair amount of money, but it was seen that they were making the money cheating other people, and they were outcasts of society. So Jesus chooses these two on the spectrum of, of fame and importance in society, the Pharisees and the tax collectors. I have to say, it doesn't take long for things to change. It doesn't take long for us to change from seeing that religious leaders are highly respected to religious leaders aren't highly respected. It doesn't take long for us to see how things change dramatically in terms of who's paid well and why and when. It reminds me of, of a story straight out of our own history here at Bethany. Bethany was founded in 1950, which means that we are now uh, 72 years old. That's not that old when you think about the fact that that's about a lifespan. One of the founding uh, couples was Dutch and Edna Faring. And Dutch Faring was a guy who was originally the baseball and football coach over at Stanford after he came out of Purdue University. He landed at Stanford, but first he went and played Major League Baseball. And he got into the major leagues for exactly one game. Now, that was not unusual because people would be brought out of college into the minor leagues, and then they would be brought up at the end of the season, and they might play a game or two, and then they had to make a decision about whether they stayed on or not. And what's interesting about this for Dutch is that his decision was to go to Stanford and become a coach, not because it paid so well, or not because there was so much fame, but because it was a steady paycheck. 
and he didn't know that he'd have a steady paycheck from Major League Baseball, and he knew he wouldn't be paid all that much, and he'd be traveling more, and it wasn't seen as some great job of fame and fortune. Oh, how things have changed. Can you imagine a person giving up their position, their possibility of playing in a major sports league so that they can go become a coach of not one but two sports? And not being expected to spend all their time coaching, but they had to be a professor as well. They had to teach something. And looking forward to that because that was the more stable job that would pay better and help them raise a family. Oh, how things change. And they change quickly. Today, we're not thinking about the fact that everyone wants to become a doctor or a lawyer. Very few people think they want to be the president or any politician for that matter. Even clergy are looked at very differently. The respect for many of us has changed. It is not the first thing we think about. And so as these things change in society, other things become more important. And I dare say that some of the bigger things that we look at in life now are still actors and actresses to some degree, but sports personalities and people who play sports. I mean, if you look at it, it's not just the people who play sports who get paid well, it's the people who announce it, the people who talk about it. Who could have ever thought that we would need more than one set of announcers for Monday Night Football? And yet now we've got two different groups, and both of them are interesting. Both of them are being paid incredibly well to be doing that thing, which 50 years ago wouldn't have paid anything because TV wasn't following sports like that. So things change, and they change quickly. Respect for people changes, their pay changes, all of this changes. And that helps highlight the issue that Jesus is bringing to light. At the time that he's speaking, Pharisees are at the top of the fame platform. <coughs> there are people <coughs> who are seen as incredibly important in their communities, especially in the Jewish community. But tax collectors, they work for Rome, and they do things that are hurtful, and they are not liked. And so all that has changed, but the problem has not changed. The problem that Jesus identifies has not changed at all. Because what he's talking about is the fact that there are people who trust themselves, who see themselves as the ones who are righteous. And with that comes a regarding other people with contempt, seeing them as less than others, seeing them as more sinful than others, seeing them as having greater problems than others. And that's what we do tend to fall into. And so he tells this parable where he takes the person who has all of the fame, who has all of the importance, and here this Pharisee stands and says, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. Now, in the earlier versions, he says, I thank you that I'm not like other men. He says that because at that time, he wouldn't have even considered that women or children could be near him. But then as he defines those men that he isn't like, he talks about thieves and rogues and adulterers, or even like that tax collector over there. Have you found yourself sometimes doing that? Have you found yourself looking to your own greatness, saying things like, you don't know who I am? You should treat me better than you do? You would talk to me differently if you knew what I do or who I am. We all have those moments when that comes up, when we think that way for a moment. We want people to respect and admire us, but we want them to do it not because of who we all are as God's creation. We want it mostly because of what we've achieved. We say in our own words, I thank you that I'm not like other people. And we're actually repulsed by what the Pharisee says. We're bothered by it. We're bothered that this person who represents God and represents the church could be standing there in his prayer and right in front of the Pharisee, pointing him out, or right in front of the tax collector, pointing him out and saying, I'm not like him. I'm better than he is. I thank you, God, that you've helped me to be better than he is. He's counting on his own righteousness, not looking at his own brokenness, not looking at his own sins, 
Not looking at the fact that he needs a savior and that the savior Jesus is coming. And so Jesus tells this parable and then he points out that there's another way. He takes the tax collector and he points out that the tax collector is, is beating on himself and is not even looking up to heaven because he is so ashamed of the things that he has done. And he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, I don't have to ask you if we do that, if you do that, because when we come together in church, we confess our sins. It's one of the reasons we do this. We confess our sins, and we confess our sins to each other and to God because we know that we have done things that are wrong. We know that all of us are broken and that each of us shares in that brokenness. And we cannot stand there pointing at someone else and saying, but I'm at least better than that person. No, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so it doesn't matter which things we do right. It doesn't matter which things we do wrong. All of us need Jesus, who is the one who came and lived a perfect life, who is the one who died for all of our sins, who is the one who gives us credit for all of those things and makes sure that we understand that we live in the righteousness that Jesus provides. And so we stand with the tax collector with the one who is an outcast of society. He recognizes his sin and he pleads for mercy. And mercy is granted. Mercy is granted by God to those who have faith in God. Not faith in themselves, but faith in God. Not faith in other people, even if they are influencers or DJs. No, we are called to have faith in God the one who loves us, the one who sent his son to die for us, the one who created us, the one who created all things. Our faith is in the fact that God loved the world so much that he sent his one and only son, that Jesus came and did these things for us. And our prayer should always be that of the tax collector. Lord, have mercy upon me, for I have sinned. Lord, have mercy upon me, for I have failed. Lord, I am a sinner. Grant me your mercy. And God does. God grants us mercy. So my friends, we follow the one who humbled himself. Jesus humbled himself, hid his glory to become a human being. Jesus humbled himself and bore our sins. Jesus humbled himself and was beaten and tortured and put on that cross to die a humiliating death. Jesus sacrificed for us. We follow the one who made that sacrifice and who was raised again on the third day. We follow Jesus, who loved us, who especially loves us when we feel unloved and when we feel unlovable. When we are in the midst of our least moments, we're in the midst of our brokenness, when we feel that people look down on us with contempt, that is when Jesus is loving I can almost hear Jesus saying to the disciples afterwards, I came to love the tax collectors, the people who understand that they are broken and are crying out for mercy. Love of Jesus is so much more than fame or fortune. And it brings us so much more than fame or fortune can ever bring to us because the love of Jesus heals us. It gives us peace. It grants us joy. And it helps us to go through this life, which is filled with struggles, but is also filled with hope and a light that guides us as we walk along the path of life, knowing that we are sinners, but we live in the mercy that Jesus provides. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This 
This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I Will you pray with me? Lord God, our Heavenly Father, it is so easy for us to look at the things that we do that we feel are right, to look at the things that we do to help others, to look at the times when we remember to pray, the times when we have seen ourselves coming to church, the times when we act well and we believe people should notice. But Lord, you have helped us to see that we also have to recognize our brokenness. We have to recognize that all of this goodness is wasted by the fact that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That, as Paul put it, even our good works are like filthy rags until Jesus comes and cleans us up. And we thank you. We thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, who has washed away our sins. We thank you that we can stand in that righteousness and in that tension of knowing that we are sinners and yet we are saints as well. Saints, because we have been made righteous, made righteous by Jesus. And so we do thank you. We do thank you that we are righteous because of the work of Jesus, because of his death and resurrection for us. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with all people so that they would have the ears of faith, so that they would hear these things. We pray, Lord, that you would send your Holy Spirit to speak to people and to speak to people through us. We pray, O oh Lord, that we would bring that message out and people would long to hear that message of faith over and over again because it is one that helps us in this, in this life. It is one that sustains us through all of the struggles and difficulties of our life. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with those who are sick and need, in need of your healing touch. 
with those who are struggling with any kind of physical or mental illness, any kind of struggle that they may have, we ask that you would bless them. We pray that you would be with our families and that you would heal their pain, that you would help them to see that they can care for one another. We pray for people who have lost friendships. We ask that you would bless them and help them to know your love for each other. We pray, O oh Lord, that in all of these things you would help us to know that we are not only held in your hands, being healed, but you are walking with us through life and making us righteous as we go. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us as we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. We pray that you would help us to find the things of life that are worthy of our celebrations. That you would help us to look not for the times when we can be upset with others, but the times when we can rejoice that people are doing your will and see the ways in which your love is spreading in our lives and the lives of other people. We pray, O oh Lord, for our world. We pray for our leaders of church and state. We pray for our leaders in all kinds of vocations. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would help them to bring peace, that you would help them to see the value of valuing all lives, of valuing all people, of valuing your creation and all things that we have that you have made for us. And so we ask that you would bless us, Lord, as we go about those things, that we would care about all people and we would be led to care for all people. All of this we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.